It's time for the Parent Memoirs. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Parent Memoirs. I'm Laura Mack. I'm Jessica James. Woohoo! We are here. We are awake. I've got my coffee. Good Lord. I'm exhausted. How about you? Oh, God. I am beyond exhausted. I just, What's been like, going on? Oh, I just... I just haven't been sleeping very well, like worse than normal. Like I always have had issues sleeping, but right. it's like I've been waking up at like two o'clock in the morning after going going to bed, finally at like you know eleven or midnight, and it's, <laughs> I'm just tired, but it's okay. Yeah. No, I I get it, I get it. We had like three or four days that we couldn't figure out what the hell was happening, but. All of a sudden, like our bedroom where it is situated, mm-hmm. it is, that room is always hotter than every other room in the house because it's getting direct sunlight most mm-hmm. of the day all the way through, you know, sunset Yes, in that area of the house. So it's always hotter. But in the wintertime, it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden, George and I were waking up in the middle of the night and just melting yeah melting and we were both especially him me i was just uncomfortable but yeah. him we were like he was i found him sleeping on the couch like two nights in a row i yeah. was like why and he was like it's so goddamn hot and we had completely forgotten that right below the bed or george's side of the bed there's a heater vent and we had covered it up quite frankly, forever ago, even when we got a new bed, like a bed frame, Mm -hmm. there's, there's a towel over it. Cause otherwise it kicks on in the middle of the night and it bakes him. Yeah. (laughs) Like it just radiates through the mattress and bakes him. Yeah. And we didn't even, it's been there for years when we've gotten new mattresses or a new bed. Every time we put the towel back and we haven't done either of those things recently. And finally, I was like, let me see if the towel moved or something. I look under there. The towels are gone. (laughs) A towel thief. Apparently. I I was like, did you move the towels? And he was like, no. And I asked TJ. And TJ, you know, you could tell when your kid's lying. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There's like a little special sparkle in their eyes. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. his big doll like no (laughs) right and he was just looking at me like why would i move towels that are buried under your bed right like uh, no why okay so i'm like trying to i was like fine it doesn't really matter i put them back and but i mean there was a good few days there that we were just like yeah we were zombies by that third day we were so tired because we were so uncomfortable most of the night and we couldn't figure out what the hell the problem was right but you know oh real quick no (laughs) no i have the funniest follow-up to the story that that i shared the last time about my mom oh okay yeah and traveling with this random woman (laughs) yes i'll put the link down below if y'all didn't catch that one (laughs) oh Okay. Um, So my mom and I, we started going to get, like, manicures and pedicures together. Aw, that's fun. It is, but now she's super into it. Like, she wasn't before, but now she's like, okay. And she doesn't get, like, fake nails like I do. She gets just her regular nails painted, but she's loving it. And she loves my nail salon. Even though she lives way down by you, she drives up here. To this nail salon right by my house because she loves them. Yeah. And I love them. I've been going there for years. And the lady that that I get to do my feet, her name's Amy. Her she and my mom love each other. Because there are times when we can't get together, but my mom still wants to get them done. So she'll go in with her. Yeah, sure. But when we can do it together, we will. So I had gone in to get my nails done while mom was in North Dakota when right after all this happened. Mm Mm-hmm. And Amy was like, how's your mom? She's a little, she's a little adorable Vietnamese lady. Love her to death. She's like, how's your mom? I said, my mom is insane. Here's what happened. And I told her, and I'll never forget, like the whole nail salon had just kind of stopped to listen to me tell this. And everybody was just like, mouth hanging open. What? Who in the world? Yeah. Why? Oh my God. (laughs) Like nobody could believe it. 
So I tell Amy this. So I go in to get my nails done yesterday. And Amy says, as soon as I walk in, she's like, your mom came in. I'm like, <laughs> I said, did you yell at her? Because Amy had told me, she's like, I'm going to tell your mom she's crazy. She's crazy. <laughs> Like, I'm like, please tell her because the rest of us apparently have no influence. Maybe Amy will. I don't know. Yeah. So I go in and the first thing she points at me, she's like, I see your mom. I tell her she's crazy. And then she tell me the story. And you know what I figured out? I said, what? She says, your mom, your mama gangsta. <laughs> and this may the OG. I know. And she just kept saying it. Oh, your mom a gangster. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yes. Yes, she is. And then I thought about it as I was leaving. Amy was ringing me up and I was paying and everything. And she's like, um, she said something about my mom again. And it just popped into my head. I was like, next time my mom comes in, you should ask her. Ask her a question. She says, what should I, ooh, what else? I'm like, because believe me, you have no idea what a gangster my mom, the more she said it, the more I was like, yeah, my mom kind of is a gangster. I was like, next time she comes in, ask her about how she used to be a bouncer. <laughs> Your mom used to like, be a bouncer? Yes, she was. <laughs> Short little Miss May used to be a bouncer. At, at what type of establishment did this occur? <laughs> A roller skating rink? No. <laughs> <laughs> so get this. This is the funniest thing. I just found this out a couple of years ago. We were at dinner. Every now and then my mom will just say stuff that I'm like, wait a minute. Like at one point she was, we were at Outback. I'll never forget this. And she was like, yeah, I was almost a, a parachute rigger in the army. A what? Wow. She's like, but my dad wanted me to go to college and be a secretary. I was like. Okay. She says, oh, yeah, I did test runs and everything. Because you have to know how to sew, Laura, and I know how to sew. Right, I was yeah. like, you know how to sew, so you were going to be a parish. Okay, Mom. Oh. Okay, Sounds whatever. a lot more exciting than secretary. I mean, you got to admit. <laughs> you got to remember, this is the back yes. during a time. Just yes. Just a totally different time. Yes. But anyway, so, yes, my mother was a bouncer. Little five-foot nothing, blonde hair, blue-eyed, angelic human Miss May was a bouncer. So she tells me this story a couple years ago where basically they had my my parents had gotten married. Okay. And they had moved. The first place they were stationed was Fort Knox. Okay. And a few months after they got there, my mom had had this tumor that had exploded. Basically, mm. it was turned out to be a 27 pound tumor wow. in her stomach. And yeah, that whole that's a whole other story that was wild. But anyway, so she went from like a size like 13 or 14 kind of mm -hmm. area to like a size 6 overnight. And she'd never been skinny in her life. Like she'd had this tumor, they think, her whole life. Yeah, for it to get that big, yeah. Exactly. And if you look at pictures of her as a little kid, she's got this belly. Like it's there. You can see, it's wild to look back at pictures. Yeah. But she wasn't used to being this, like, super skinny, like, ooh. Right. Okay. Yeah. So she, they, she heals from the surgery, and then she's in Fort Knox with nothing to do. My dad's at work. So she decides, okay, I'm going to go get a job. So she goes to the officer's club on base and asks, to, like, can I be a secretary or can I be a hostess or a waitress or something? Like, she's just looking for a job. And the guy looks at her, and because she's so this is this was the appeal apparently because she was so tiny he was like no but i'll hire you as a bouncer and she was like what <laughs> and, you, and you know my mom she's like okay right and apparently the thought process was you've got these officers if they get out of line they're not going to injure a lady right yeah so it will naturally like bring down the temperature not having somebody big and aggressive, but just having a tiny little lady step in and go, hi, you guys need to get along now, <laughs> which you know my mother would do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Even back in her 20s, she was a cookie-baking grandma. I know right. she was. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So apparently she took the job. She was all excited. And she went home. 
<laughs> and my dad was like, you're going to what? <laughs> I could see that. <laughs> and this apparently caused a big old argument. And he, she was like, you can't tell me what to do. Right. I'm a grown woman. <laughs> he was like, you're also my wife. And I kind of care about your personal safety. Right. Okay. So she did that, I kid you not, for three days. Three days. And then three days later, she found out she was pregnant with me. And my dad marched down to the officer's club and was like, okay, she quits. (laughs) Nice. It's one thing like, okay, yeah, she's a grown woman. But now we're talking about a pregnant woman who gets knocked down or whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. even if it was an accident. But, yeah, I told Amy, I was like, ask my mom how she used to be a bounce. Oh, that's hilarious. And Amy was like, I don't even know what to say to you. Like, she just staring at me. She was like, I love your mom. I said, oh, I love my mom, too. Believe me. Oh, that's fantastic. But I do feel like I just learned these things about her. Yeah. That she doesn't. I would think at this point in life, I would know, but I just don't, and it makes me like. What else you got in there? I know, I'm like, what else have you done, mom? I mean, I've, I've always suspected, I have no proof, but I've always suspected that she's been a little bit more shady than I've ever thought. I watched her break into a house once with a credit card. Yeah. When I was a teenager. We, we got locked out of my aunt my aunt and uncle's house. And she was like, she popped out a credit card and was like, opened up the door. We were all like, hmm, that's interesting. Why do you know how to do that? <laughs> and she's like, MacGyver. MacGyver. I, I was just going to say, MacGyver. MacGyver. Oh, oh my God. crazy. Well, so anyway, that's awesome. I thought that was a fun little PS. Yeah. <laughs> How the kids been? How's, been? how's school been? They've been fine. They're out for a week right now. They're out for this whole next week because of parent-teacher conferences and teacher-whatever. Oh, really? teacher Yeah. <laughs> and then they get a, a week you off so next thrilled. month for a spring break. See, District 20 does it like they let them go, like they do Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, mm-hmm. the kids are off. They have parent-teacher conferences, and then Friday's, like, teacher learning day. Yeah. And then the next week is the vacation. Yeah, no. They have a whole week off? For, wow. yeah. For, for parent-teacher conferences? Parent-teacher conferences and teacher development. It's, well, you know, it's still better than District 49. <laughs> because, real, well. They were even worse. They gave, like, twice as much time off for some reason. I don't know. It's so, George and I talk about this all the time. Do you ever remember having this much time off? Like no. not, and I'm even talking like pre-pandemic. I understand pandemic is different, but pre-pandemic. No, I remember when I was in school. I remember having a week off for spring break. I think two weeks for Christmas, and then summer break. I mean, I remember Martin Luther King. Well, yeah, like the normal like bank holidays and stuff. Those, yeah, those yeah. as well, but, but- not. All this Not other just these crap. random day. Oh, this is a this is you know two days of teacher learning and three day. I don't remember any of this. Yes, but at the same time, their summer breaks are shorter because I remember being mm. out of school from like May into like and going back in like the end of August or September. Mm-hmm. But they they get out of school at the end of May and they're back in school the first week of August. Yeah, you know. So I mean, yeah. I, don't, I guess it all washes out. But it's I would it's, it's just stupid. Yeah, it's no, like, I get that. I tell, you know, I've, I, I've talked with Mike before. I'm like, I just don't get how people have, like, parents have both have full-time jobs, like, with as much time. And I, you know, he would just say, well, that's fine. Just leave the kids home alone. They could be latchkey kids, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, trying to make it better, not worse. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, honey, have you met our children? I right. love you to death, but have you met our children? I don't think I would mind so much, like, as they got older. But with Liam, <laughs> our youngest still being only six, I'm just not. I'm not there yeah. yet. As it is, we're talking, we're we're debating right now whether or not we could try letting them walk 
to and from home, or to and from school next year, because, you know, Olivia will be in fourth grade, Liam will be in first grade. And I'm even like, just the idea of them walking to and from school, knowing how they walk in the neighborhood when I'm with them. Like, I'm just like, I know. Just in their own little worlds. Right. And it's like, it's so funny. Not paying attention to traffic. (laughs) Yeah. Because they get mad at me all the time. Why can't we just walk to school? I'm like, because you don't follow the rules when I'm with you. How can I expect you to follow the rules when you're not with an adult? Thank you. You walk in the streets all the time. You don't pay attention to what you're doing. And what do you want me to say, kiddos? (laughs) Like, you're dumbasses. Sorry. (laughs) You're dumbasses. Your street safety, you know, whatever is just not up to par. (laughs) God. Your situ, as they say in the army, your situational awareness. There you go. <laughs> is not on point. Yes. Okay. It's just not <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's that's something that Mike and I are trying to figure out right now as to whether or not we're at that point yet. Maybe not this year. Maybe next year. <laughs> well, this was the age that Grace had me try to kidnap Nathan. Oh, really? Like, like yeah, fourth grade. That's when she started letting Nathan walk. Walk yeah. home, but she needed that assurance, right? So maybe you should try to have somebody kidnapped. <laughs> okay, but see, like the problem that I would have with that is like, is if they go. Well, no, not even that. Like everybody that I know that I would trust to try to do that, they know. So I would have to hire like a stranger <laughs> to try to <laughs> fake kidnap my kids. You know, like I don't have, I don't have any friends that they don't know. So I yeah, because I mean, Grace and I were work friends, so we I had never met right. Nathan, so she knew she could get away with it. So maybe I should ask Google, be like, is there a service that provides safe <laughs> fake kidnappings with trusted young men who drive white vans and hand out candy or puppies? No, trusted young women. She picked me because she was like, I want to see if she'll go. Oh, he'll go true. with a woman. This is true. I think I think Olivia and Amelia would be okay. I think it's Liam. I think he would be the one that I'd have to worry about in that scenario. I think Amelia would tell him to fuck off. Yeah. Like, literally. I, I could think. see that. And I think Olivia would just be like, no. <laughs> you could just throw the no. candy on the curb and go. <laughs> <laughs> but Liam, like, I think if somebody was you like... You can fuck off, but leave the candy. <laughs> Liam, I'd be like, oh, look at my cool G.I. Joe. And Liam would be all for it, you know? Yeah, of course. Of course. But he's six. And, yeah. But, I mean, TJ is just the most friendly. Like, he'll talk to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I We went to go, when we went to go get, order the doors at Home Depot, mm-hmm. we had to sit there forever and look at options. Not even look at options. We yeah. knew what we wanted, but we have to go, okay, left or right. Or this screen or that screen or yeah. this design or that design and blah, blah, blah. And we were just clicking through the options and he was just kind of playing around. We're in the windows and doors section and he's just showing people features of crap and talking to anybody. And I'm right. like, TJ. Yeah. Dear Lord, you don't know these people? Could you? Yeah. Gabby used to do that all the time when she was younger. And like, I don't know. But it makes me think back, especially knowing the adult that nathan is now yeah i don't think nathan would have gone with anybody to begin with yeah because he's a he's an introvert yeah he is a true blue i don't want to talk to people i no no you could stay you know just keep personal distance and yeah you could just not talk and you know you could just leave me alone (laughs) like he's just yeah he's and even as a child he was very introverted so i don't think you could even get his attention because he's just like (laughs) if i can't see you 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 can't see me i know exactly (laughs) like i really don't yeah maybe that i i don't know looking back on it i'm like i don't think grace had anything to worry about but at the same time i feel like you and i might i hate to say that well see at least though like I mean, the only thing that like comforts me if like our kids were to walk, were to walk to and to 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 school and home from school. Balls, damn it, my brain. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I can't talk. It's if, early. If they were to walk to and from school. There are people everywhere. 
you know, because there's other parents walking with their kids and, you know, there's all kinds of kids walking home. But at the same time, I, I, you know, I think about, oh my God, there's just all these kids. That's like, there's just so many options for plucking, (laughs) you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I feel like, okay, well, if they did start to walk home, then definitely at least Olivia should probably have a phone, which I feel stupid saying because we didn't have phones and we survived but that's just the way that it is now. Like, yeah. at least if Olivia had a phone, if something happened, at least there would be some type of phone between the three of them. I don't yeah. fucking know. I think too yeah. much about shit. That's all I can say. No, I get it. For me, it's not... For where we live, it's crossing the street. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that's why, before we moved, that's why we would never even consider letting Gabby walk to school. Because she had to cross... Peterson and that road was people drove like assholes yeah there was always accidents and shit and crossing Lexington oh yeah like and the way that Lexington it's not so much the traffic the amount of traffic Mm -hmm. there's enough of you know crosswalks and things like that the issue for me is Lexington with the curves right yeah I worry that TJ won't go even if he does go to the crosswalk yeah those curves people come flying around them they're not paying attention whatever right. and bleh. yeah that's the same way it was the crosswalk was right at the curve in mm-hmm. the road yeah it's not it's not safe no like it's it's and again it's, his situational awareness right they isn't just, where i need it to be exactly so i don't know so that's my you know my mental parental struggle for the moment is trying to just decide what we're going to do about this. All right. So we got um, a couple of little updates here. Josh Duggar mm-hmm. is going to be sentenced apparently on April 5th or 4th. As long as it's not April 1st, I don't care. I really don't. Is that just because of April Fool's or is there something else? <laughs> no, April Fool's. Oh, okay. I, no, no, no. I just don't trust it. I just don't trust it. Okay. Like, nope. Fair enough. <laughs> With these fuckers, I don't trust it. <laughs> that makes sense. And his, you know, he's applying for a new trial and blah, blah, blah. They're still trying to say that it was this other person who magically hacked into his computer from another state and set him up or what the fuck ever i don't know but yeah it doesn't it doesn't appear like it's gonna go anywhere but we'll see so that's a quick josh duggar episode or josh duggar update i thought this was interesting i I think this is this is just gonna get messier and messier so chad daybell has put in a motion to sever his case from Lori vallow And basically, the idea being, if they're not tried together, then basically they don't know because she's still being evaluated and all this stuff. And she's trying to get her mentally competent to be tried. Sure. It sounds like what they're trying to say is, well, if she can't be tried at the same... Or if she's not there and she can't aid in her defense... You guys can't use any evidence that only pertains to Lori Vallow in Chad Daybell's case. Does that make sense? Mm Mm-hmm. So I have a, I mean, that seems like a pretty effective strategy because if you don't explain it with both of them. Right. It's, yeah. It's, I think it's going to be messy. I don't, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was going to be messy. Regardless, but still. Yeah. One way or another, it just, bleh. So they're they're filing motions to do that. They're arguing about venue. Like, can they get a fair trial here or not? They're going through all that. Whatever. But the big update is Miss Stouch. Right. I'm annoyed. Yeah. No, I, I think a lot of people are. It irks me. It irks me that it's being allowed. I'm yeah. like, wait just a fucking minute. Why is this being allowed? Right. So this is an article from KOAA.com. 
Uh, let's see. On Friday, El Paso County woman accused of killing her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon Stouch, asked to change her plea to not guilty by reason of insanity. The judge said he will allow the plea to go forward, but Stouch will have to go through a mental health evaluation. The evaluation is ex it, the evaluation is expected to take longer than normal, and the judge said he did not know if the trial date was, quote, in jeopardy. Let's pause it right there. Hasn't she been evaluated? Uh, several times. Thank you. What the hell are we talking about? Why? Why is this being allowed? I don't know. It's a good question. I have no idea. I, I just, I'm really not understanding. Yeah. And... <sighs> I'll keep reading this. Investigators, um, okay, blah, 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 blah. Stouch faces over a dozen charges, including first-degree murder. Stouch's defense also asked for a motion not to have a jury to a large due to a large amount of publicity the case has received, which will make it difficult to find a fair jury. So they want the judge to decide, which, quite frankly, to me, seems smart. Yeah. It kind of does. It really does seem smart. Only from the standpoint of just on its, on the bare, like, face of it. Yeah. It looks bad. And you're going to have a hard time finding people that you know, like, you know a judge will be, at least you can hope, that a judge will be as impartial as possible. Right. With a jury, you're rolling the dice on 12 people that are going to look at a dead kid right? that you obviously murdered. It's, yeah, it's going to be hard. But here's my, my one question about this. Does that mean she's saying she did it? Because if she's saying, I'm not guilty by reason of insanity, that's saying... Yes, I did it, but I was insane at the time. Right. No, you're right. So is she saying that she did it? Is she finally admitting? I don't know. I don't know. Right? Because I thought her, her verdict was, or her plea was changed to not guilty. By reason of By insanity. By reason of insanity. Which is which is not our not guilty by reason of insanity. The argument isn't that you didn't do it. It was the that argument she is that did it because did it. she was insane. Yeah. Huh. I didn't look at it that way. But you're I mean, I'll be that completely makes sense. I will be completely honest. I didn't look at it that way until just this just now? moment. I just it all of a sudden it dawned on me. I was like, wait a minute, are well, we yeah, missing because, the big point here? Because you wouldn't say <clears throat> you wouldn't state it that way unless you were saying, Yeah, I did it, but I wasn't in the right frame of mind when it happened. Right? Right. It's not saying I didn't do it, but I'm crazy. So even if I did do it, I, that's not what it's saying. Not guilty by reason of insanity is changing the plea to say, yes, I did it. In my mind, maybe uh, I need another legal person to explain this to me. But in my mind, saying not guilty by reason of insanity is saying I didn't or I did it. Maybe. Um, let me keep reading in this article. Both the judge and the prosecution argued that waiving a, waiving a jury would be premature. The judge went on to address Douch directly and said that without a jury, she gives up the possibility of a second chance at trial. He went on to ensure that in his experience, jurors come in with an open mind. I think what he's saying is that if it's a bench trial, there's not really an opportunity to appeal like like there is. There's still I believe there's still opportunities to appeal, mm -hmm. but. Not as many as if you have a jury trial. I th right. think that's what he's saying. I think. Mm -hmm. um, the judge said he believes they should vacate the trial date and keep the March 17th date as the next court appearance. The trial would depend on the mental health evaluation that's done. I thought that was that was really interesting. Yeah. Like, okay, so are we taking some kind of accountability here? Probably not. So do we have a, a rescheduled uh, trial date? Uh, no, as of right now, the next hearing in general be, will be, I think that's, it's, it was supposed to start on March 17th, right. but I believe what he just said was, okay, we'll just keep that date for a hearing to kind of get a status, Yeah. but it, it doesn't look like it's going to start in what, three weeks from right. today? Man. Doubt it. And it's already very, been two very years. Very 
God, has it been two years? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, we'll keep following it. We'll see what happens. Yes. Fingers crossed. All right, cool. So if you guys want to send us stories, topics, whatever, you can email us at theparentmemoirs at yahoo.com. So until next time, I'm Lara Mack. I'm Jessica James. Love your faces. Keep it sane. Hey, parent peeps. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or on your favorite podcasting platform. Stay strong, mommies and daddies. Love your faces. 